Hello and welcome to this short clip looking at further substitutions in aliphatic amine synthesis. When we make amines initially, we always start with ammonia as our nucleophile because that provides the nitrogen in the NH2 group, the amine functional group. So let's look at our ammonia first of all at first principles. You'll clearly see the nitrogen has a lone pair, so therefore that means this molecule can behave as a nucleophile. So let's react some ammonia with bromoethane to start the reaction off. You can clearly see ammonia behaving as a nucleophile as the lone pair is attracted to the delta positive carbon on the CBr bond in bromoethane. But that makes a salt. So the problem here is that you don't have an amine. So the nitrogen is positively charged because it's got three hydrogens plus also a bond to the um, CH2, CH3. So a nitrogen with four bonds will give it a positive charge. To get rid of the bromide, we need to react the um, salt with sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide removes one of the protons in the NH3 plus there, and you get the amine left behind. So the amine isn't charged anymore, so the bromide ion can drop off. And the bromide ion finds the sodium ion that was left behind to make sodium bromide, and you've also got water as a product. So if we take the ethyl amine we just made, this can go and react with another bromoethane molecule in exactly the same way. So that gives us a NN diethyl ammonium bromide salt, which can also be converted to an amine, this time a secondary amine. This is called NN diethyl amine. And obviously this amine still has a lone pair of the nitrogen, so it can go and do the same thing again. So let's look at this process from start to finish. In each stage we have the nucleophilic substitution onto bromoethane and also how we're going to convert the salt we make into an actual amine. So the bromoethane with ammonia we've just looked at making the ethyl ammonium bromide which is our salt. The ethyl ammonium bromide can react with NaOH to make our ethyl amine with the lone pair of the nitrogen and like we said we've got sodium bromide and water made as a side product. If we now take the ethyl amine, like we said a moment ago, that can go and make a salt again. So this time around we're making NN diethyl ammonium bromide. To convert this into a salt, uh, into an amine rather, we react it with sodium hydroxide, which removes um, the Br- minus, plus it produces a water, and we get NN diethyl amine. So this is a secondary amine this time around. So like we said before, keep an eye on the lone pair of the nitrogen, because that can go and react with yet another bromoethane molecule. This time we're making a, uh, a NNN triethyl ammonium bromide. This is a tertiary ammonium salt, which can be converted into a tertiary amine, which is obviously going to be NNN triethyl amine. Still a lone pair of nitrogen, still one more possible substitution. This is the final one because if you look at what happens you get um, a nitrogen with four ethyl groups attached to it. So this would be called tetraethyl ammonium bromide. And what happens each time is the excess sodium hydroxide added would remove a hydrogen atom from the nitrogen, leaving the nitrogen with a lone pair enabling it to go back and undergo further nucleophilic substitutions. This time, the lone pair is unavailable because the sodium hydroxide can't remove an ethyl group from the nitrogen because hydroxide ions don't react with carbon-nitrogen bonds as the CN bond is much less polar than the NH bond. So therefore, the chain of reaction stops and you're left with a tetraalkyl ammonium salt. Okay, hopefully this was a reasonably useful roundup of the chain of reactions that happens when you get excess haloalkane. It's a slightly different story when you get excess ammonia, but I'm not covering that in this particular video. Okay, thanks again for listening. Until next time, see you soon.